In this video, what we're going to do is derive the equations of motion that we're going to be using. Um, there are four big equations that we use, and they tend to get repeated. And I'm going to have a few things to say about these equations um, when we get into actual problem solving. And so it's important that you see this. Now, one of the reasons we're doing this proof is because I want you to understand that when we do physics and we give you equations and we have these laws and theorems that they don't just come up out of nowhere they don't come out of the ether which is something that was erroneously believed in the early days of the 20th century and before and the thing is it's very helpful to know where things come from I'm not expecting that you will know how to derive the various equations that we have but I am expecting you to do the best you can to understand what I'm doing during the proof because that is immensely helpful when it comes to your own understanding and trying to get through problems whether they're conceptual problems or mathematic, mathematical problems it's very important that you understand this part of the process because inevitably anytime you're solving a problem you are doing a proof of sorts and it's always based on fundamental conceptual ideas which we express mathematically so that's why we're doing this proof I'm not expecting you to be able to repeat it and so let's go ahead and get started now what we're trying to show with this proof is that these four equations all come from the same place and basically what this is going to mean for us in terms of problem solving is that it doesn't matter where you start to solve a problem you can literally use any of your equations of motion as a starting point and we'll get into that more later now as far as this particular video is concerned our focus is going to be on these two equations this third one we've actually already derived from a velocity time graph and we said that this which if we rearrange it we get a is equal to delta v over t we said that this was the slope of the velocity time graph so we're just going to keep that idea in mind I'm not going to do anything to rederive that this particular equation is derived from equations this is just algebra mostly okay so we're not going to do anything with that today but this has a graphical approach to it and it's very simple to understand and that's what we're going to do now okay so the first thing we need to do is set up a velocity time graph that's going to give us velocity on the y time on the x and what we're going to do is we're going to start with some v initial right here we're going to say this is v initial and we're going to say v final is up here at this level we're going to call this t initial instead of starting at the origin and over here we're going to say this is t final where collectively this whole thing in here is delta t and so our final velocity is right here this is uniform acceleration or constant acceleration so we connect these two points with a straight line okay so in order to derive these equations we're just gonna do a couple of basic things like we already know how to do so for example we know that we're looking for these two equations d is equal to v initial t plus one half a t squared now this is what we're trying to show so in order to show that we're going to have to use, because this is a velocity time graph, we're going to have to use the area. So we know that uh, displacement 
is equal to the area of the graph and that the area of the graph is going to be equal to the area of the box that would be this and then the area of the rectangle so we're going to get d is equal to the area of the box or I'm sorry the triangle plus the area of the triangle now the area of the box is just going to be length times width and the area of the triangle is one half the base times the height so the length of our box goes is just V initial and the width of our box is delta T so we get V initial times delta T now you can see that we you know we state it's implied that T is equal to a delta T it's a time interval so I can rewrite this as just the T instead of delta T and that's what I'm gonna do it's just easier that way so this becomes T and already you can see hey we're formulating this equation we have a long way to go yet but we're getting there then the uh, area of the triangle we can see we've already got our one half and then this AT squared so let's do the rest of this one half the uh, times the base the base is going to be delta T which I'm just gonna write as a T and the height is not V final the height is this right there so in order to get the height we do V final minus V initial So we get V final minus V initial. Now you might be looking at that going, okay, Mr. Isil, um, that is not T squared. So how do we do that? And that's easy. Acceleration is equal to V final minus V initial over T. So we put T to the other side and we get AT is equal to V final minus V initial. So notice that we have v final minus v initial v final minus v initial right so a t is the same thing as writing v final minus v initial so what do we do d is equal to v initial t plus one half t times a t which becomes v initial t plus one half a t squared so we've proven our first equation using basic ideas of the graph now the other equation that we're trying to show is d is equal to one half times v initial plus v final times t and this equation I refer to as the acceleration independent equation of motion the other equation I refer to as the position function. So this one is actually very, very easy to do. I mean, it's still going to come down to area. Let's start with that. So we get D is equal to the area. But how else would you find the area of this? And if I may, I'm going to erase this line right here so that it's hopefully easier to see and if you look at this we have a trapezoid now the area of a trapezoid is equal to one half base one plus base two times the height all right so you can see by direct comparison that the height is the time axis okay so right here is going to be the height of our trapezoid and that this would be base one or two and this would be the other base so now all we're going to do is substitute in those values so we get d is equal to one half times base one which is right here this is base one so that's going to be v initial plus base two goes from the x-axis all the way up here to v final 
And then the height we said was that other dimension, which is the length of our x-axis, which is delta t, or we just write that as t. So that's our other equation. Okay, so that's it. We've just derived our four equations of motion, well, two of the four.